Hello and welcome to the video. This is an overview and first look at this Aquila 20 kit from Beta FPV. You get some analog goggles which are on my head, you get one of their little Express LRS radios and you also get their new Aquila 20 quad as well. Now this is a kit that comes in a box with all the batteries and everything you need, chargers, manuals, the whole thing, everything's bound together. It's really aimed at those of you that are brand new to the hobby who don't want to spend three weeks figuring out how to use Express LRS, Open and Edge TX, Betaflight Configurator, how to go through all that stuff, how to bind FPV equipment. It's all ready to go out the box. You just have to charge the batteries and you are ready. Now, this is an updated version of a kit they've had for a while. Beta FPV are pretty good at kind of making this stuff by now. They know exactly what people are after. And everything that comes in the box is kind of all aimed at those of you that are new to the hobby. So what I thought I'd do in this video is uh, show you how it comes, unbox it, go through the specs, um, go through what's changed between this Aquila 20 and the previous version, which I think was something like the Aquila 16 or something. Go through those two things, give you a closer look at the radio, the quad, and also the goggles, and then talk about how it flies and kind of give my summary at the end. Standard stuff. So while I unbox this Aquila 20, let me go through the specs. Camera adjustment angle on this is 15 to 30 degrees. The battery is a special battery for this particular quad. It's the Aquila 20 1100 milliamp hour 2S battery. I'll go through the differences between this and the previous kit they've had in a moment. Only one flight controller inside the quad is the Aquila 20 version 1.0. I'm not exactly sure what it's running. It could be kind of beta flight. It seems incredibly stable in flight. So they've obviously done quite a bit in there and made it very difficult for you to get into the settings as well, which I guess is kind of the point if this is aimed at beginners. Three flight modes. There's kind of uh, kind of a normal sport and manual mode. The normal and sport modes are very supported. Then you can turn off all the support and try and fly it like you stole it. So there is options as you increase your proficiency to kind of unlock additional speed and capability. Flight time on this is claimed 10 minutes because of this 2S bigger battery. The motors are 1103 10500 kV units. It's a little bit bigger than the previous version. It's 100 millimeters. The port is a BT 3.0 port and a Gemfan 2.2 propellers. Uh, the radio, and um, we'll look at all the pieces in a little bit more detail in a moment, is the Light Radio 4SE running Express LRS 3.5, and that can be bound to other things as well. Big differences between this and the previous Aquila kit. This is the new VR04 FPV goggles versus the VR03. Has the new Light Radio 4 versus the old ones have the Light Radio 2. The camera in this quad is the new CO4. It's got a third of an inch CMOS sensor in it versus the CO2, which only had a quarter inch CMOS sensor in it. So that gives you wider camera adjustment. This is a 2S quad versus a 1S quad before. Larger motors and props, 20 millimeters more wheelbase. So this is 100 millimeters versus the 80 that it was before. And you get that longer flight time. So the previous kit was advertised about eight minutes. This, if you are careful with your flight, you can get up to 10. So this is a very consumer looking model with props and spares in the box. And setup is gonna be easy to fly and simple to get into. No external port to get into the settings on the quad, not a disaster. And the custom batteries, they're not my favorite thing. I like more generic batteries that would allow you, as you grew in the hobby, to use third party bits of kit. You are kind of stuck with this stuff. Flight time is nice at 10 minutes. And unfortunately, I can't see a beeper on this thing. That's gonna be useful if you fly outside in the grass. Most of us do, we get a bit carried away. We go in a field, try and fly it, and then land it somewhere where we can't find the thing. So having things like flashing lights and beeper can be very handy. So let's have a closer look at the individual pieces and then talk a little bit more about how it flies. So let's start with the radio. I can turn all these pieces on as I go and then you'll kind of see it all working at the end. Again, this is the Beta FPV Light Radio 4 SE model. I did look at the Light Radio 4, I think last month. Uh, this is kind of a cut down version, Express LRS inside. 
no detail in the supply manual that comes with this on how to change the settings. However, we do have a USB port at the bottom that you can connect to your computer for things like SIM practice. That's pretty standard stuff. Mode two by default, we have two three position switches, two toggle switches and two momentary switches. Now all the switch layouts are actually in the manual, but this switch is for arming. This switch is your modes. And I think this one over here, I think is your flip over after crash. To turn it on, surprise, surprise, you press it once and then press and hold it. Everyone seems to have to do it that way. And then when it's powered up and you've got a blue light, you're ready to rock and roll. Make sure that the switches are in the right position before you start. So down at the sides and down at the bottom, then it's ready to connect to the quad. Only other thing to mention here is that it is an inbuilt battery. Um, lots of these styles of radio are. You just plug it into the USB port and it'll charge the battery. It'll last for probably, you know, a whole morning's flying. Uh, but just be aware of that. I quite like personally radios that have a replaceable battery. So we'll leave him on and we'll put him to the side. Next one to look at then is the quad. Again, this is the uh, Aquila 20 quad. These are the custom batteries on the back. Um, not a lot really to talk about. Analog camera at the front. No real ports to get into everything. Everything is nicely recessed. We have the propellers nicely protected so you can fly indoors without bouncing off stuff. Models like this really live and die by oh, how easy it is to get replacement parts. There isn't a replacement for this thing that goes around the outside, this kind of shroud that protects the props. Uh, these kind of things need to be available as spares because I guarantee that it'll either get broke because you fly into something, someone will step on it, the dog will eat it. There'll be lots of different things that can happen to this. So those kind of spares availability is important. In terms of the batteries, the batteries um, are these kind of special ones for the quad. Again, not a massive fan of having custom batteries. The way that you charge them is using the supply charger. You need to plug the supply charger, uh, the USB-C port. Uh, you get like this little kind of wiggly line that runs around here, kind of like snake on old Nokia phones, showing my age. Plug it into the battery, it's not charging. You have to press the battery once, then press and hold it to turn the battery on. And then once the battery's on, then it'll start charging. Charging is pretty quick, actually. It's not bad at all. Um, I think these batteries are HV units in here. So let me just turn that battery off and that's gonna take it back to the snake and we'll plug it. We'll plug it into the quad. It just slides in the back, push it home until it clicks. And then to turn the quad on, you press the battery once, press and hold it. And th there we have it. So we have some status lights at the side, green lights. We have a green light at the back with a battery, handy for orientation, I like that. We have a little kind of blue flashing light at the bottom and then that's ready to go. Last part of this is going to be these new goggles. Uh, to power it on, you just press and hold the power button. There's not a lot to these goggles at all. Uh, we have an external power input. We have a USB-C charging port here. I've charged mine. It doesn't take too long to, again, just stick it in. Single antenna here at the side. When it's powered, you get the little blue light at the front. Five-way joystick record button, and that's it. And if we look inside, hopefully you can see that we have the on-screen display and we also have the kind of bits and pieces. If I move the mode switch, for example, on the radio, hopefully you can see that in like normal mode and sport mode. It does have a DVR. There is a little spot for a micro SD card and you can start and stop recording. To arm the quad is simple. All we have to do is just click the arming button the motors will start and then we raise the throttle to 50% and then at 50% throttle it will basically just hover and do most of the stuff itself. Again, this is really aimed at those of you that are new to the hobby. In terms of flying, there's absolutely no surprises here. It works as expected and the setup on this little quad is absolutely configured to inspire confidence for a new pilot. Pro tip, if you can't switch from the normal mode into the manual mode during the flight, 
that's how it's supposed to be. Power on and off the model is needed to get into that kind of acro mode setting. Everything is bound. The goggles actually support spectacles as well. I meant to mention that when we were looking at it before. So if you do need spectacles for closer at work, you can wear the goggles over them, which is a nice touch. Hover point is all set for you. So set the hover throttle to about 50% and it will just sit there. Stability is massive. There's lots of help here. This is like, for those of us that fly regular quads, angle mode turns up to 11. So as soon as you love the sticks, it's going to sort itself out. There's no drama at all. Noise isn't bad, very quiet whine from the props as you would expect, but nowhere near enough to cause anyone to come over and find what you're doing. Flight time's advertised to 10 minutes. I think you could probably get that if you were flying very carefully. Uh, lots of speed on the model as well, even in the lower speed mode loads and loads of fun so be aware of that uh, even in the low modes although it's a lovely stable hover and it'll kind of sit in the air once you start flying it around it's fun and you can just crank up the speed to be faster and faster as you get more proficient there is a simple menu in the goggles that doesn't look like regular beta flight I would recommend knowing how to get into that. The default VTX power setting is the 25 milliwatts, which is the legal limit in lots of places. However, you can via that menu increase it to 100 and then up to 200 milliwatts. So for those of you that are interested in getting into the hobby and want to basically buy one thing from one place and have everything you need in a box, the quad, the goggles, the radio, the batteries, the charger, all those different bits and pieces without having to worry about it, then these kits represent a nice option. For those of us that have been in the hobby for a long time, kits like this are a little bit less interesting because of course we've surpassed what this quad can do, what the radio is capable of, and also what the goggles are too. But we are not who these kind of things are aimed at. If I had someone in the family that doesn't currently have a set of kit that was desperate to get into the hobby and wanted to try out flying a quadcopter and also flying analog FPV, this would be exactly the kind of thing that I would look to get my hands on for them. Only a couple of things here, as I've mentioned, that I'm just draw your attention to first and foremost is the battery has you know a very very custom connector on it that limits potentially the options to use third-party batteries not a showstopper but it does mean you're kind of locked into this and these very designed quads in this kind of you know dgi style i'm not a massive fan of that because it does limit your ability to play with this stuff does have a very basic manual in it that you can get to via the goggles, but in terms of how getting into it, changing the configuration, tweaking stuff, it's not really designed for that. It's just designed for you to unpack it all, charge the batteries and be flying relatively quickly. I think the challenge with these kits is that there are quite a few of them around now, so you do have to do your homework. And with this being analog FPV, there's a limited lifespan potentially of how you might want to fly. Lots of people still love analog FPV, but HD FPV is becoming more and more of the way that pilots fly. So maybe this would be the way to start, and then you'd upgrade yourself some HD FPV goggles, a HD FPV quad, and a nice Express LRS radio as well. But this, let's face it, is a gateway drug. It's all about getting you into the hobby, giving you a fantastic experience, giving you something that you can learn to fly on without having to learn all of the ins and outs and lots of technology. And then once you're completely hooked, then you'll end up like the rest of us, spending a lot of money on lots and lots of very cool stuff. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.